The Lord's blessings as we gather, as we uh, worship tonight at our third Advent midweek service. Uh, we're doing it, of course, um, online, and tonight would have been our Sunday School Children's Christmas program that we have uh, mo normally, uh, where the children are here and sharing the story of the birth of our Savior through verse and song and having the church filled with their family and relatives and friends. And so tonight, though, we are going to have the children with us. They're going to be singing uh, before the scripture readings and then before the sermon. And so we look forward to seeing them uh, in, uh, with their joyous uh, songs and, and gratitude to the Lord for his great gift to us in Jesus. So we may the Lord bless us as we focus our attention upon his word this evening and have this time of Advent uh, meditation and devotion. We uh, begin with the opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God shall come. He does not keep silence. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation may sprout forth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the children will sing, Away in a Manger. The scripture reading for this evening is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. We now hear the children sing, Jesus, joy of the highest heaven.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text this evening's meditation comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1. We've heard it just a few moments ago. To brothers and sisters in Christ. When plans change, how do you respond? Kind of sounds like a funny question in the midst of all the things that we are responding to in the midst of a pandemic and the changes and the uncertainty that can take place in, uh, tomorrow or next week or two weeks from now. Uh, but in the midst of changes, in the midst of plans that change, how do you respond? You're, you, it happens all the time. You're going on a trip, you're flying by an airplane, you look up at the reader board and you find your flight and you see the word delayed. Maybe it's weather, maybe it's mechanical, maybe it's something else, but the change of plans in your travel has taken place. Or you get to your destination, you've got a rental car reserved, and you chose that company because they had the particular car that you wanted to serve your needs and get all of your things to wherever you wanted to go, and you arrive at the counter only to hear them say, we don't have your car available and you're stuck with the minivan. (laughs) How do you respond to change? Or maybe you're working on a project, planning an event. You're, You're not doing it by yourself. There's others who are helping you. And at the last minute, you're informed of a change that somebody else decided and you are not okay with it because you know that change is gonna cause problems and the outcome will not be nearly as good. Or maybe it's a change of plans because somebody's sick, your child, and you can't go do the things that were planned for the day. How do you respond when things change? When there's a change of plans? Maybe some of us get angry and frustrated. And we are willing to vent that anger and that frustration on the people who have informed us of the change. Maybe some of us go silent and pout and mope because things have changed and it's not gone the way that we wanted things to go. Maybe there's some of us who just are flexible and whatever is going to happen is whatever is going to happen and it's all going to work out in the end. Tonight, as we have our midweek Advent service, we're getting ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And for these last couple of weeks, we've been preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus as God's word has been preparing us to see our Savior coming to us, to save us from our sins. And and this year, we've been focusing on different people of Advent. We've looked at Zechariah. We've talked about Mary. And if you missed either one of those messages, I encourage you to go find those recorded services. You can find those on our website for the church kind of where you found this devotion. And you can hear about God's work through Zechariah and Mary and and how God's word affects us as we think about those people. And tonight, we conclude our little Advent series. As tonight, as we look at the Advent person of Joseph and how he responded to changes in his life. And we hear it from the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, Matthew begins his gospel account about Jesus' birth in a unique way. He does not talk about the census of Caesar Augustus. He doesn't talk about Mary and Joseph making the journey to Bethlehem and no room in the inn. He doesn't bring up a stable or a manger or, a manger or angels announcing to shepherds tending the flocks at night. No, Matthew Matthew begins with a change of plans. So he talks about the birth of Jesus. And we hear it in the first verse of our reading tonight. 
Matthew 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Picture it for a moment. Mary and Joseph are betrothed. Uh, to understand what that means, we, we should understand marriage biblically for a moment. Uh, today, we would say that Mary and Joseph were engaged. But biblically, being betrothed was stronger than enge in engagement. It wasn't a full marriage. No, being betrothed means that it had been agreed upon. It had been arranged that Mary and Joseph would be married. Sometimes in Scripture there are prearranged marriages. Uh, maybe Joseph's family spoke with Mary's family. Maybe Joseph went and spoke with Mary's family, specifically her father. And they agreed that Mary and Joseph would be married. Maybe it was a verbal agreement. Maybe they signed a contract. Either one could take place in Scripture. Oftentimes the bridegroom would give a gift to the bride's family in exchange for the bride. Maybe that's taking place now as Joseph is gathering that gift to give to Mary's family, but the marriage wouldn't be fully complete until the banquet. The week festival, as we think of Jesus and his first miracle at the wedding in Cana, that's when the marriage is official. But here, to be betrothed, it was legally binding. It was as if they were married. And so they are planning the celebration. You can picture it. Joseph preparing what life is going to look like, making the plans for the gift to Mary's family, making the preparations for a home and what life is going to be like. And you can, you can see him making the plans and the arrangements. And then Mary comes with a surprise, a change of plans. She's pregnant. And Joseph knows he is not the father. How does Joseph respond to this change of plans? We hear it in the next verse, verse 19. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. You see, Joseph, in biblical times, by law, he had several rights. One of those rights could be to bring charges against Mary as an adulteress. And the result of those charges would be that Mary could be stoned to death. Uh, that law also said that if, if he would not bring charges against Mary and people learned that this child was not Joseph, that would be bring much shame and humiliation to Joseph's life. And yet the text tells us that Joseph is a just man. I like how the NIV translates that. He is a righteous man. And he is unwilling to put Mary to shame. And so he has made a plan in his mind. He has decided that he is not going to bring charges against Mary publicly. And he has decided he is not going to go through with the shame and the humiliation of people learning that this child does not belong to him. He is going to divorce her quietly. He's not going to make a big deal of it. They are going to part ways and go on with life. That's the plan. until his plan changes. Verse 20 of Matthew chapter 1. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, 
For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph has his plan. He will divorce Mary quietly. And then in a dream, the angel comes to Joseph and speaks speaks God's word to him to say that what is conceived in Mary is from the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, being a just man, being a righteous man, he trusts these words of the angel and he changes his plan. We hear that in verse 24 and 25 of our text. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. How do you respond to a change of plans? Things in our world are changing constantly. Even in the midst of a pandemic, we are not for sure what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or two weeks from now or even a month from now. Things are constantly changing and we've become accustomed to living with change and uncertainty. But we still are called to respond to it. How do you respond? God invites us to think of our response as we look at Joseph. Joseph's plans change with Mary being pregnant, his response and plan to divorce her quietly, and then the angel comes and directs him on what he is to do. And notice, in the midst of all of these changes of plans, Joseph, Scripture records Joseph, not his angry words. They record Joseph not pouting and going silent. They record Joseph not questioning the angel or wondering what's going to happen next. No, they record Joseph trusting the word of God trusting the word of the angel. In fact, we see that throughout Scripture. This isn't the only time that an angel comes and speaks to Joseph in a dream. We know that after the birth of Jesus, the wise men from the east, the magi from the east, come to Herod looking for the king who has been born, and they go and they bring their gifts to Jesus, and when they return by a different way, Herod is irate, and he kills all the boys two years old and younger. But an angel comes to Joseph in a dream and says that he should go to Egypt. And then after Herod's death, Again, the angel comes and speaks to Joseph and says there's a change of plans. You can now return to Israel. And they live in Nazareth. And every time, every time there is a change of plans, we see Joseph, this just, righteous man, responding to change faithfully righteously, trusting the word of the Lord, trusting the word of an angel that directs him in how to lead as a father, how to care for his family, how to live trusting not in his own strength and his own abilities and his own plans, but trusting in the plan and work and strength of God. That's what we see with Joseph. Joseph, he was an upright, righteous man, just, but he wasn't saved because, because of what he did. He was saved because of Jesus. 
Isn't that what Matthew teaches us in our text? The angel comes and speaks to Joseph about the baby boy that Mary is going to give birth to. And what does the angel say? You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus is the one who saved Joseph, Mary. Jesus is the one who has come to be your Savior to save you from your sins, to forgive you from all of those responses to the change of plans that were not, were not righteous responses. He's the one who forgives our anger and our silence and our pouting and our frustration when things don't go our way. And it is Jesus who comes to save. It is Jesus who comes to you, to you who live in a world that is always changing, in a world that is always uncertain. It is Jesus who comes to you to bring you something certain, to bring you something that you can place your trust your faith, your confidence on his life, his death, his resurrection, his word. A word that teaches us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Indeed, Jesus' love for you and his forgiveness, those never change. May we, like Joseph, continue to cling to the word of Jesus in the midst of all the things that change around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of Jesus which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Gracious Lord, guide your church here and around the world. Defend us from the assaults of the enemy by the power of your word, and grant that within the safety you provide we may find peace in your Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you order all things in heaven and on earth. In the right time, you sent the angel Gabriel to announce to Mary that she would bear your Son, Jesus. And at the right time, he was born. So guide the leaders of the nations in our time. Surround them with faithful and wise advisors so that their decisions are in accord with your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, bring healing and joy to those who call out in their time of need. We pray especially for those of our congregation who are struggling with the illnesses of COVID or cancer or injury, we ask that you would bless them and keep them, healing them according to your will and strengthening their faith. Give these your children health and healing according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, Give to us, your children, the peace which, has, which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We now sing the sending hymn on Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry. <laughs> 